Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to today's webinar, Best Practices for Implementing Machine Monitoring. I'm Abby Bauman. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Amper, and I will be kind of moderating this session. So we're going to wait about 30 seconds to a minute to get everybody logged on. Um, Akshat and I will wait here. We have a lot of registrants, so just want to make sure everyone has a chance to jump on before we start. In the meantime, though, if anybody does have any questions, you can use the question box um, at the bottom of the navigation in Zoom. And if you have any technical difficulties, please feel free to just chat me directly and we can get that sorted out. Excited to be doing this. Yeah, seeing people log on here. Let's give it another 10 seconds off shot. Got it. And just a reminder before we start, uh, there will be a recording and everyone will get a copy of the slides. Um, so if you miss anything, don't worry about that. You will be getting an email after this. Cool, with that, Aksha, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Fantastic. Right. Um, so thank you everyone for uh, being here. Really excited to be going over best practices for implementing machine monitoring. Uh, just a quick introduction. So my name is Akshat. I'm co-founder and CEO at Amper. Um, you know, started the company about five years ago and have always been really passionate about manufacturing. Um, you know, grew up around manufacturing my whole life. My dad in this photo, he, he runs auto component uh, production. So, you know, grew up with lean manufacturing, probably a little too uh, incorporated into my life, uh, you know, 5S in my bedroom, looking at you know, tack times of making breakfast and all kinds of things. So uh, all of this to say, um, you know, really passionate about this industry and you know, there's so much potential um, when shop floors and uh, manufacturing companies are run the right way. And um, yeah, our mission at, at Amper is to help manufacturers unleash their potential and uh, by building really simple and powerful tools to do this. And, um, you know, and especially in the CNC machining world, there's a saying, if you're not making chips, you're not making money. And we strongly believe that, you know, what gets measured gets improved. And uh, over the last couple of years, there's obviously been a lot of, um, technology uh, growing on the shop floor. And, uh, you know, we think as, as good as, uh, the tools only as good as they're being used. And one of our mission over here is to really keep it simple, keep it practical. So fortunately or unfortunately, you're not going to hear a lot of uh, terms like IoT and Industry 4.0. Um, on this talk, we're going to be talking about specifically how you can help, uh, how you can roll out best, uh, shop floor monitoring the right way. Great. So, you know, machine monitoring and tracking OEE is certainly not something that's a completely new concept. It's been around for a pretty long time, but there have been real, um, uh, you know, hurdles in getting these kinds of systems up and running. So one of them is having limited IT resources. It could be anything from the Wi-Fi to you know, just having limited bandwidth with ERP systems and other IT projects running the background uh, at any manufacturing plant. Uh, machine integration has typically also been a huge bottleneck in getting machine monitoring live for a lot of companies. You know, any shop floor can have machines that might be 50 years old, that might be 20 years old, bought this year, and they just don't speak the same protocols uh, for communication. Third is what do you do with all this data, right? How do you really make it such that it's used tactically day over day to day, as well as uh, really adopted by the entire organization? And finally, is cost. Uh, we all we all know, you know, the true cost of getting systems live is often a lot more with its internal time, uh, investing in IT, maybe even PLC upgrades, and so. All of this to say that traditionally, you know, machine monitoring has really been held back and we're trying to, uh, you know, go over how we can avoid some of these stumbling blocks. And it starts with, you know, keeping everything simple. And so 
diving into what does a successful implementation really mean? So it starts with having, in our, in our opinion, uh, improved metrics for your customers across quality, cost, delivery. The second is increased production capacity um, with your existing resources and really identifying where those hidden pockets of you know, losses are, eliminating your production surprises, uh, energizing your continuous improvement journey and having the entire team really excited to talk about you know, what are the top problems and how do we solve them? And finally, having modern tools for the entire team to run day-to-day -day operations. Uh, you know, manufacturing is a pretty demanding industry with, uh, you know, with a very dynamic environment. And the better the tools are, the easier things are to, uh, to manage and run. And you know, more specifically, when it comes to the technology and getting things up and running, uh, a successful implementation in our eyes means having complete visibility across your shop floor. So you have uh, true clarity on your operations, uh, having accountability throughout your organization through setting those baselines and the goals, adoption and expertise on how to use the system across your entire team um, and across all roles, whether it's engineering, operations, maintenance, and understanding what to do with the data once you actually collect it. And um, essentially it's just widespread adoption across the team. Uh, this is one of our views of how this data can be used day to day. So, you know, you have your day to day um, operations team using it for eliminating production surprises on a weekly basis around focusing engineering effort and uh, production planning. And finally, on a long-term basis, really investing in, it could be CapEx or process changes. And, you know, across, um, you know, Amper, we've had a lot of experience um, in right implementations, but also, you know, failed implementations. So hopefully you can pass on some of our learnings and best practices that we've uh, you know, developed as a company. And so, you know, some of these learnings, um, some of the success stories really lead to an empowered team that has modern tools and you don't have to use pen and paper to collect information on the shop floor, um, no production surprises, operational clarity, and better productivity and coaching for your team. And on the flip side, the cost of failure that we've seen when machine monitoring and these systems across data aren't implemented the right way uh, it can be pretty expensive for the long term. So one of them is just broken trust between the shop floor team and the individual that rolls it out. Uh, you, you know, it, it can sometimes come off as big brother or trying to you know micromanage and monitor every small action. Um, you know, really changing systems too too frequently can lead to a jaded workforce uh, that you know comes complacent to these systems. Uh, disjointed data. Uh, again, you, you'd want to have the same system for the long term so that you can rely on a data set, not just for the month, a year, but really for the long, long term. And um, again, it's, it's so important to avoid failure. Just, you know, uh, as you, you know, engineers and your team really excited about, you know, really driving change and continuous improvement, you want to make sure that it's really set up the right way. So everyone is really excited uh, about driving this positive change. And uh, there's a term, you know, in a famous like McKinsey paper about avoiding pilot purgatory. So uh, the rest of the, uh, the webinar today will be focused around more tactical tools where you, so that hopefully you avoid uh, pilot purgatory. Okay, so diving right into the tactical ways. So five ways you can avoid, um, five best practices essentially. So the first is, you need a champion at a high level, it could be the VP of operations or the plan manager who is actively looking at the data and pushing the team and the company culture um, around shop floor data collection. This is by far the number one um, you know, requisite for having a successful implementation. Um, as you know, there's a million uh, potential things to work on at any point in a shop floor and uh, it, it's incredibly important that the highest level person within a, an organization or a plant really cares about this information so that it becomes a priority for the entire organization. Um, you know, as, as important as it is for the rest of the team to be really engaged and excited about it, um, you know, having a champion is just key for uh, bringing data to being a priority. The second is um, 
making machine utilization or OEE as a core planned KPI that is reviewed either daily or weekly. Um, again, you know, what gets measured gets improved, but it really has to be incorporated into a plant's core KPI set. Um, because by, by reviewing it and you know, whether it could be in a, in a production meeting, it could be in an executive meeting, uh, that number will have a focus and uh, the team will actively work on improving that. So um, you know, mo most companies have quality cost delivery as like you know, core KPIs for the business, which makes total sense. And adding additional leading indicators like machine uptime or uh, OEE um, you know, makes it such that you, you can actually affect the QCD at the end of the month by making better decisions day to day. Uh, so if you don't have this already incorporated, I would highly encourage you to do so. The third best practice is having a project owner uh, for that machine monitoring system who is not the same person as a champion. Now, often we come across situations where you know, someone who's really passionate about lean manufacturing and using data and you know, say, say a plant manager, but they often just don't have the time to truly implement it uh, and, and manage it for the long term. And so we've seen, you know, doing a regression on our customers, uh, the customers that are most successful both have, of course, the champion at a high level, but also a dedicated uh, project owner for the system. Um, you know, as, as much as, you know, companies like Amper and, uh, you know, machine monitoring companies say how easy it is to get up and running, it does, you know, involve work, whether it could be setting up tablets, training the team, and, and so on. So just having a separate project owner for um, the implementation. And this could be someone in continuous improvement. It could be someone from engineering. Uh, it really depends on, on the resource that you have. All right. The fourth is uh, having operations, supervisors, or leads enforcing data entry and actually using this data day to day. Uh, you know, any machine monitoring uh, tool should have some ways by which you can have it on your phone as an app. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, our best practice over here is ha having supervisors use this data to, you know, attend to machines, help their operators out on, it could be a setup, it could be a technical issue, uh, it could be, you know, excessive downtime that might cause, you know, misdelivery or overtime that day. But, you know, we've, we've seen a lot more success when you have uh, supervisors and leads using this data for day-to-day -day decision making. And, you know, whether it's an any system, it could be an ERP system, it could be machine monitoring, uh, without having regular audits on uh, you know, data entry, the, the data won't be as meaningful in the long term. So you know, in a typical machine monitoring tool, you, you often need to have you know, downtime reasons that are tagged by operators. So you know, uh, basically tagging why the machine went down and you'd really want to have supervisors and leads making sure that that data is being you know, entered. It only takes a couple of seconds, um, but it's important so that you can review this for the long term. All right, and the fifth one is having recurring meetings around this initiative, both with your vendor as well as internally to understand best practices, learn about new features, and overall have a place where you can track the project uh, the learnings, the issues, uh, whatever that might be. But we've seen folks that have dedicated meetings around this initiative uh, be a lot more successful. Um, essentially, it serves as a place where uh, you're able to really review this information and um, you know, essentially raise any issue that it, whether it's internal, whether it's external. Um, yeah. So essentially, just to recap, uh, number one, having a champion at a high level, like a plan manager who really champions this information, having the KPIs generated by machine monitoring incorporated into the plant's KPIs, having a dedicated project owner who is not the champion uh, so that you know, it's implemented the right way and there's clear ownership. Uh, fourth, having operations supervisors look at this data regularly and audit the data quality. And fifth, having internal regular meetings uh, to learn about the best practices. And so diving into a 30, 60, 90 day plan, this obviously sets the foundation and tone for the solution. So uh, we've broken it up into milestones and things you wanna accomplish um, at those, in that initial phase. So in the first 30 days, 
uh, you want to make sure that your goals are uh, aligned around what do you really want out of the system. And you know, at, at a baseline, start collecting you know, true machine utilization data to better understand your capacity. So in your first 30 days, um, essentially the first is to form an internal task force to spear the implementation. This could be a combination of um, you know, continuous improvement, operation leadership, supervisors, and so on. Second is meet with your vendors regularly, at least once a week, so that you're trained up on the best practices and um, you, know, you, you make sure you're following, uh, you, the implementation is happening uh, per your timeline. And third, hold status update meetings internally every other week uh, to make sure it's progressing the same way. We're big fans of Gantt charts and making sure that a project is um, on time. I'll we'll just talk about that, that in a second, but uh, these are usually our goals in the first 30 days in addition to installing the actual hardware. All right, so in the first 60 days, um, you'll wanna have an understanding of the data and have a solid foundation um, of the system. So essentially the first is taking advantage of low hanging fruits, like uh, visualizing this data on the shop floor in real time so that you have some visual management going. And the second is having automated alerts being sent out when your machines have excessive downtime. The nice thing about both of these is that it requires no data entry, it requires no uh, you know, training per se. It, the system is simply giving you information that you, didn't, uh, you, that you wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, the second is training operators on the system. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, uh, you know, tagging downtime codes and so on uh, really augment the context the system is able to provide. So you know, setting up a reward system to make sure the uh, data is being logged as necessary displaying this on the shop floor and setting up an audit process to make sure it's accurate and complete. This could be you know, weekly check uh, to make sure it's, um, it's happening as expected. Um, and again, continuing to hold internal meetings with your task force. And uh, by day 90, um, essentially we will wanna in initiate weekly engineering reviews around shop floor data. So it could be the, the project owner, engineering manager, and essentially this team would review the downtime data and overall OEE to identify where are the bottlenecks and if the engineering team should focus on uh, making those improvements. This could even be things like stand, checking standards of part numbers, uh, you know, improving quotes and, and so on. All right, the second is uh, initiate monthly management reviews. So uh, this could be the plan manager, it could be you know, an area manager in a shop floor, but essentially uh, look at the downtime codes and uh, maybe even make some decisions around, um, you know, process changes. You know, we've often seen folks get pretty surprised when they look at what are the true numbers on the shop floor? Um, you know, they, there's of, often a gut feeling of like, you know, the machines are running at 50 to 60%, maybe even higher. But when you actually set up automated data collection, it can be pretty surprising. So uh, it could be, you know, changing your, you know, phase structure for operators to be able to attract more operators. It could be um, adding machines, it could be a, a whole lot of other decisions. And essentially in the first 90 days itself, typically with Amper, uh, we have at least a CI project that has been uh, determined and kicked off. So um, yeah, essentially what we just reviewed is over the initial three months, what are the steps that go into it? What are some milestones that you want to keep track of? And we have Gantt charts to uh, essentially help folks keep track of all these elements. And uh, again, this is just a visual board to kind of show what are the goals in the, in the three months um, broken up. Um, you know, as part of this webinar, we'll also be sharing a, a detailed Gantt chart that you can use uh, for any machine monitoring implementation, whether you end up uh, you know, trying out Ampers or not, but it essentially breaks out all the steps that you need and is mostly used as an internal tracker to make sure things are happening um, on time. So uh, for sure, keep an eye out for an email about this. And um, you know, a quick plug on Amper, you know, uh, assumed you know, most folks that are seeing this are interested in learning the best practices and are exploring options. So, uh, we've been 
uh, really excited about this trial program that we have where you can try it out on two machines and you know see what it takes to get the system up and running, have a baseline on real-time machine data, get these alerts and all kinds of other features. So uh, definitely reach out if you're interested. It only takes about 10 minutes to get up and running. You just clip the sensor around the electrical wire and uh, you can have it live in about 10 minutes. Um, so with that, um, wanted to you know, open up the, the webinar to Q&A and um, yeah, hopefully you'll found the information I shared helpful. Yeah, hey, Afshad, I'm looking at the questions that came through. Um, we did have a few questions kind of surrounding the idea of how you get operators on board with something like this, just because it does tend to be a little big brothery. Um, is, are there any unique ways we've had customers kind of get, get operators involved? Yeah, there's a couple of ways uh, we've seen. So, you know, the first is really rewarding operators that are uh, championing the system, things like tagging the downtime. And so we've seen some of our customers financially pay, um, you know, operators more for, um, you know, putting uh, information into the system and championing the, the initiative. Uh, you know, a lot of tools with the, like Amper have, tools to help operators communicate better. So let's say, you know, a, a pain point operators often have is it's usually the front office that's holding back production. It could be an inspection quality. It could be the tool crib programming. And if you can roll out a tool that helps operators call for help without having to leave their machine um, and also hold the team accountable to response time metrics, that's, uh, that's a huge win that gets buy-in. And finally, you know, by looking at this data, uh, I would strongly encourage folks to make a process change in the first 30 to 60 days that actually helps folks on the shop floor. It could be maybe extra tools that they needed. It could be um, you know, just more resources from an engineering or management standpoint. Uh, you know, anything to really um, have a quick win and a, and a decision made in, in those first couple of days itself. Yeah, and I know, especially for us when we're running pilots, what our customers will do is pick the top two highest performing operators or people that they really want to help develop their skills so that they're owning the project and then telling you know other operators about how great it is um, after the, the pilot. Somebody did have a question, how does the communication tool work slash what does it look like in our solution? So I can give a quick demo. So this is our operator interface on the shop floor. And essentially, this is the place where essentially folks would tag the downtime. So uh, really easily you just click why the machine is down. But in terms of the operator communication tool, all they got to say is, I want to call the team. I'm going to make a new call. They can, you can set up your own teams, like programming, maintenance, and so on. And they can click, I'm going to call my programming team. They can add a message. Like I need help with some, you know, some issue. Click submit, and a text message or an email, depending on how you set it up, gets sent out. And it's tracking the response time it's taking for this individual to get to the machine. Uh, and on the long term, you can actually get analytics that you know which teams are responding to the operators on time, and uh, maybe even which teams are getting called too often, uh, and maybe they don't have the bandwidth. Or there could be opportunities for cross training. Nice. Um, let me see, look at some of these other questions we have. What is the biggest mistake we've seen um, when, when people are implementing our solution? Uh, the biggest mistake I would have to say that I've seen with, with you know, our failed implementations have been just a, champ, uh, a champion not really standing behind, sorry, a, 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 an operational leader not standing behind the system. Uh, it is a big culture change to have, you know, real-time data and more information about the shop floor. And if the highest level person at a, at a plant doesn't really stand behind it, um, you know, there's little reason for the rest of the team to really care about the information. It's not the technical aspects. It's usually just the, the culture change and buy-in. Do you have any tips, and this is off the fly, of, um, 
how you can get a senior level champion to care about something like this. Say like I'm a CI engineer and I can't convince my owner to. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. I, I would say it really depends on the person. I think uh, either if it's a more one approach, I would say is like a business case around it, which is what is the opportunity cost of not knowing this information? It could be in revenues. Uh, it could be in being competitive, uh, just having to invest in other more expensive ways of increasing capacity. So I think there's a business case, but I think it's also, um, you know, maybe it's providing resources around how things would change from reducing the temperature of a shop floor from being chaotic to more organized and systems driven. Yeah. And I would also say to lean on the sales rep that you're working with for whatever vendor is their, their job is to help you create the business case. So um, definitely use, you can use your sales team when you're evaluating something like this. Um, we did have a question about the trial. How much time does it take to get the free trial actually up and running? Yeah, so you know, if, if folks are interested in free trial, uh, we usually ship it out the next day after the initial game planning call, and um, you know, it takes about twenty minutes, twenty to thirty minutes to install it across two machines, and after that, there's about a week of the system learning the electrical uh, signals of the, of the machines. So, all this to say, from the day of kind of kickoff to installation and being trained up, it's about ten days but you're really just installing it for about 30 minutes. Okay, and is it completely self-managed or does someone actually help? Uh, yeah, so all of our trial customers have a dedicated uh, you know, uh, individual. So uh, from, you'll have weekly trainings um, throughout the month uh, or so of trials. So we're pretty hands-on in making sure you're fully set up and trained up on the system. Great, I think we answered all the questions. Um, if anyone has last minute ones, just type them in the Q&A box. I do wanna call out that we do have another webinar coming up next, next month, actually in a couple of weeks, the five essential KPI dashboards every manufacturer needs. Again, that's gonna be a quick 30 minute webinar on June 10th and you can register there at the link that's on the screen. And also that will be in the follow-up email as well. Great. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out today. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.